my grandmother's house. Grandmother who is no more here with me, but whose memory will always be with me. I want her. I want her love back. But will I get it? This is all we'll come to know in today's capsule summary. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walad. Today is very beautiful. It is a very short poem, okay, but absolutely adorable. This poem, a part of UPHESE syllabus, of course, a part of Indian literature, is My Grandmother's House, written by Kamala Das, published in 1965 in her poetry collection called Summer in Calcutta. Kamala Das, an Indian writer in English, particularly in Malayalam also, lived from 1934 to 2009. The style of my grandmother's house is autobiographical. We know it that Kamla is talking about her grandmother, about her childhood days. And the theme is nostalgia, lost love, innocence and loss of innocence. Okay. Let's start with this poem. It is just 16 lines. Okay. There is a house now far away, where once I received love. That woman died. The house withdrew into silence. Snakes moved among books. I was then too young to read, and my blood turned cold like the moon. What does Kamla say? I received love from my grandmother when I used to visit her or I used to live with her. She's not specified it. Basically, as a child, Kamla, whenever would be with her grandmother in the grandmother's house, would receive immense love, immense love. But how as age and as life is, we have to come and we have to go. The grandmother passed away and Kamla's life changed. And also the grandmother's house life changed. How? The house after grandmother left is silent. Snakes, snakes are a sign of coldness and immortality, both. So snakes slither in between the books, which were a part of grandmother's house. Then Kamla says that when I was a child, I could not read those books, obviously. And then she says that my grandmother's death turned my blood as cold as the moon. What does this phrase mean? As cold as the moon. It means still motionless, introspective. So Kamla's, you know, blood, blood has to continuously flow, right? For the body to work well. But Kamla's blood has stopped moving, which means she's saying that I'm as good as dead after my grandmother's death. Here the theme is loss, right? A loss of a loved one. Nostalgia. Okay. Let's move on to the second page. This entire is like, you know, one verse. Please remember this. Just for explanation purpose, I have broken it down. The 16 lines are in a single verse. Next lines, let's read them. How often I think of going there to peer through blind eyes of windows or just listen to the frozen air or in wild despair, pick an armful of darkness to bring it here to lie behind my bedroom door like a brooding dog. You cannot believe, darling. Now, what does the poet say? She says that I often dream of going back to my grandmother's house. Although nobody lives there, the house is absolutely empty, dark. I wish to go there. Why? Three reasons. Please listen. First, to peep. Peep is to look. To look through the blind windows. Now, why are the windows called blind here? Windows cannot be blind. They're called blind because there is darkness inside. That is number one. And another meaning of blind windows is Kamla is calling her eyes blind, visionless, aimless. As I told you, she's very, very incomplete after her grandmother's demise. So she says that I want to peep through those blind windows. Okay, maybe darkness inside. Maybe her eyes are dark. Next, what does she want to do? She wants to go back. And she wants to feel the frozen air. Here, frozen air means motionless. Air always moves, right? Air. But then here, the air is motionless, weak after the grandmother. And next, what does she want to do? Kamla wants to carry some darkness with her back to her current house. Carry this darkness means carry old memories. 
And then she says that I want, you know, this darkness or these old memories to stay with me behind my bedroom door like a brooding dog, like a thoughtful dog. Why does she choose a bedroom door? Because the most intimate place of your house is your bedroom, right? Not the kitchen, not the drawing room, not the study. It is your bedroom where you relax, where you dream. So she wants that she should carry this darkness or she should carry these memories of her grandmother back to her current house keep them behind her bedroom door where these memories will stay like a dog, like a brooding dog. Theme again, melancholy and longing. Then what does Kamla say? Last line I have repeated in the next page. So let me repeat these lines. She says, You cannot believe, darling, can you, that I lived in such a house and was proud and loved. I, who have lost my way, and beg now at strangers' doors to receive love, at least in small change. Finally, Kamla says, here we come to know that she's actually referring to someone dear to her because she says, you cannot believe, darling. We don't know. It can be her friend, her lover, her husband. She says, you cannot believe, my darling, my loved one, that I was once so proud of myself, which means I was so confident because I was taken care of, I was loved. Let me tell you, this is truth. When you are loved, confidence comes in you. When you know that somebody cares for me, it actually appears in your attitude towards life. You're very positive, yes? Those happy hormones, they start generating in the body. Similarly, Kamla says that, oh darling, I was once so proud, confident. I was once so loved and so taken care of by my grandmother in that house. But now I feel aimless. I've lost my way. Now she's actually saying that I beg for love. She's, she literally compares herself to a beggar, but a beggar for, not for money, but for love, for feelings, for emotions. She says, now I knock on strangers' doors. Basically, I look for love in strangers. And also, I don't want too much love. I only want it in small change, as a favor, little love. In a favor of, we don't know, physical favor, any other kind of favor. She's just saying, I want love. I am desiring it from strangers, at least in small change. Change here can be favor. Change here can be little. Okay? Decipher it the way you like. I liked it. I really liked it. You know, when you lose somebody very dear and near to you and you remember them. Now that we have so many photographs and videos as memories, but during Kamla's times, so much of photography, videography, mobile phones were not there. So they just had their mind to remember, to think. Then they would write with pens. They would write poetry for the dead and the gone. Nice. Few poetic devices in my grandmother's house. Simile, when you compare two things with like, here like is used. My blood turned cold like the moon. Next, an armful of darkness to bring it here, to lie behind my bedroom door like a brooding dog. Right? Darkness is compared to a brooding dog. Next device is alliteration. Okay, repetition of sounds. Far away where? Away where? Then, behind my bedroom door like a brooding dog. B, behind, b, bedroom, b, brood. Easy. Personification. A non-living object is compared to a living object. Blind eyes of windows. House withdrew into silence. Humans, they can get silent. A house cannot be silent. So these are exa examples of personification. Imagery, very strong imagery, especially sensory images. imagery. Senses are involved. Senses of sight, touch, you know, hearing. How? Peer through blind eyes of windows, peering through. Listen to the frozen air. Pick an armful of darkness. Next strong imageries, snakes moved among books and more, okay? You should actually look for it. Imagery is when you read something, an image comes into your mind, right? Next symbolism. Of course, this is a symbolic poem. The grandmother's house symbolizes poets' innocent, love-filled childhood, unconditional love. It also depicts now the angst and gloominess of her current state in life. Next, enjambment is used. Lot of enjambment. Yeah, the entire poem is enjambment. Enjambment is like 
one line flows into the other without any punctuation. Look, the lines are actually flowing without any punctuation. Lot of enjambments and then lot of sejuras. Sejuras are pauses, okay, breaks to depict the catastrophe in her life. Example of sejuras are love and then that. Silence, snakes. Books, I. I've written their line numbers also. In line two, it is love that. In line four, books, I. Line seven, there two. There are pauses, okay? Line nine is despair. Then there's a pause and pick. These are sejuras. Form and structure, as I told you, there are 16 lines, uneven lines, free verse, no definite rhyme scheme. Easy? Liked it? If you liked it, comment down. Share our channel with your friends and relatives. Of course, if you're preparing for competitive exams based on English literature, you can join our course by Dr. Kalyani Walat. Yes? Take care of yourself. This is Hina from Team Walat. Bye-bye. Have a lovely weekend.